Hey, hey, I'm Naya. What we're gonna be doing today is going over Burst of Destiny. I figured, you know, the set is dropping soon, so I just read through everything. I took the OCG set card list, read through it, and I picked out five cards slash archetypes that I wish to go over with you guys, so we should just get started. Also, just a quick disclaimer, I feel very um, self-conscious about my English, so if I ever like stutter or don't find the right words immediately or repeat myself, it's just because I'm not that great <laughs> at speaking, my vocabulary is not really broad, so um, I just want you to bear with me and uh, hopefully you still enjoy the content. Alright, so having said all that, let's just move to the cards. Now I have a bunch of tabs pulled up over, like over here on the screen and also a notepad and stuff. So if I ever look down, it's just because I have a bunch of links and stuff over here so I can read the cards to you. So we're going to start off with the spell Small World. Now, this card is just, it's just mind boggling. It's like something that you need to read for four or five times because you just need to try to even understand it. We're just going to read it together first and then discuss it a bit. So it says, reveal one monster in your hand and reveal one monster in your deck with its same type, attribute, level, attack or defense. Only exactly one of these. Banish the first revealed monster face down, then add to your hand one monster from your deck with the same type, attribute, level, attack or defense. Only exactly one as the second revealed monster. And if you do, banish the second revealed monster face down and you can only activate one small world per turn. So essentially, first of all, I think you should be getting the card as soon as possible because someone is gonna break it. It's just a matter of time. And when someone breaks it, because it's gonna happen, you know, you don't wanna be the one going, oh, that's what you can search. And then the card just, you know, spikes up and you don't get it, basically. It's something that's happened to like all of us at least once, probably. So this card, I feel like, is something we should all obtain just to be prepared. But the actual implications it has it's like so if you build your deck in a way that where you can utilize small world purposefully basically you can make almost anything in your deck searchable if you play the correct like for example hand traps with different types of monsters or things like that you just need to play around with all of the stats and then if you run small world essentially you just make the cards that are maybe not searchable searchable all right so the second card is King of the Sky Prison. Now, King of the Sky Prison is a Dark Rock level 10, 3000, 3000 effect monster. And people are gonna be divided, probably. Now, the trap players are gonna be all, you know, excited for King of the Sky Prison, and then the other players are gonna just gonna be like, oh, <laughs> so trap decks get even more things. You cannot, oh, they're trap cards now, damn. Like, trap cards and trap decks overall, they're not that great. You know, in my opinion, it's it's just my opinion. If a deck does more inherently, it's just gonna win most of the time over like a trap deck, for example. So in my opinion, King of the Sky Prison, we're gonna read it first though, so you're gonna understand better what I'm talking about. So it says, during your main phase, you can review this card in your hand until the end of your opponent's turn. And if you do, well, this card is reviewed by this effect, set cards on the field cannot be destroyed by card effects. If a set spell trap card is activated, you can special summon this card from your hand. Then if this effect was activated while this card was revealed in the hand, you can set one spell trap directly from your deck to your field, but banish it during the end phase of the next turn. You can only use one effect per turn and only once that turn. So this part is completely fair, but like it just protects your cards. And why I feel like this is not, it's probably gonna piss me off at some point when I play against someone. I, I can see it already, but like why I think it's not that bad right now, at least is because trap decks inherently, what they need is a combination of an archetype, hand traps and traps. When you draw like a, an altergeist hand, you're just praying that you don't break. And even if the in archetype things are searchable, you're essentially just relying on the five cards that you draw. And if the draw happens to be good, you know, you want to protected because different back row removals i mean yeah red reboot is a one but there are still twisters 
lightning storm, even like an MST. There are so many things to combat trap decks just because if a trap deck sacks you, it's like, it's annoying. So you don't want this to happen to you. So obviously we have a bunch of back row removal, but like the trap decks can get something too, I guess. And also, like I said before, they're inherently a bit worse. So I feel like there's no problem that they get a bit of support. Now the third card I wanted to mention was the Evil Twin Link 4. So I'm gonna just read the effect to you first. It says, quick effect, you can tribute this card, special summon from your grave up to one Kisako and Lila monster each. You can banish this card from your grave, then send one Evil Twin monster from your hand, deck or face up field to the grave, send one card on the field to the grave. You can only use each effect once per turn. All right, so I'm not that familiar with the deck, but from what I've seen is, you have the same amount of disruptions or interaction with your opponent during their turn as you did before, but instead of linking into the link two at the end of your turn, you just link into the link four since it needs two plus monsters. So you use both of the Kisako and Lila to go in the link four, and then you still get the draw, you still get the pop, but then during your turn, you can out something that they might have established during their turn. So the removal, as you have probably seen and noticed, is non-targeting and it sends to the graveyard. Sometimes cards cannot be targeted, they cannot be destroyed, aka Dragoon or things like that. So if you have even an in-archetype monster that can easily deal with those things, it immediately raises the ceiling of Evil Twin. All right, now the next card is something I'm probably the most hyped up out of all, out of the entire set. And yes, there are a couple dope things dropping, but I'm most hyped up about this and it's the Destiny Hero Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. I didn't want to mess up the name, so I had to read it. But it's basically Phoenix Enforcer for those that are not like DX fans. Phoenix Enforcer has the same two materials such as Flame Wingman, but then Jaden goes into Flame Wingman all the time and maybe makes Phoenix Enforcer like once or twice. So the fact that they made Destiny Hero destroy Phoenix Enforcer, this by itself is like enough for me and probably any other GX fan. But the effect is actually so nice. It's great for heroes. And as you're going to hear in just a bit, it's great for other decks as well. So let's just read it first. Let's see what we're dealing with. It's a Dark Warrior level 8, 25, 21. It needs one level 6 or higher hero monster and a Destiny Hero monster. And it says, monsters your opponent controls lose 200 attack for each hero card in your grave. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. Quick effect, you can destroy one card you control and one card on the field. If this card is destroyed by battle or a card effect, you can activate this effect, special summon one destiny hero monster from your grave during your next standby phase. The first thing we need to talk about is the fact that obviously it's hero support their ceiling is not that high especially if you like go first if you don't play like any going second odk version if you go first and for example you, know, you don't want to play in tuni beetle or if you don't open mask change this is something that you can just easily make with polymerization even and it just provides additional disruption which heroes are missing i think also similar to uh, the monster we read before it doesn't target it just destroys two let's just check it once more it destroys a card you control and a card on the field so what this does is obviously it's non-targeting but then if he decides to destroy himself he can special summon a destiny hero in the next standby phase from the graveyard and this is gonna work i mean in heroes it's gonna work wonders obviously but in a deck like virtual world now at this point people are running Malicious, you know, some of them are running malicious, malicious to make Beatrice easily and to have just free discard fodder for Qinglong, for example, and you get to discard something that actually does something in the graveyard, which when this drops, people can just play Fusion Destiny, Malicious, and then a Destiny Hero that you can mill. And what this is going to provide is obviously additional disruption. You get to pop something or destroy himself during the opponent's turn, but if you don't destroy himself, the monster summoned by Fusion Destiny is going to get popped in the end phase anyway. So it gets destroyed and then it special summons a Destiny Hero, aka Malicious, in your standby phase. So you, you can go into Synchro and XYZ and then the Malicious is another body when it banishes itself from the grave summoning another Malicious. So you get to go into another thing and you also pop something. I'm gonna test it out for sure. I'm super hyped up about it. 
So yeah, so before going over the last one, I just wanted to have a couple honorable mentions. Heroes are actually getting another free special summon in Destiny Hero Denier. And then Rocket Caliber is a free special summon for dragons. And then you also have Borolot, I mean the Boro archetype cards, which are Boro Code Dragon, a Link 3, and then the first ever Borolot Ritual Monster, Borolot Riot Dragon, who can negate the opponent's special summon and also synergizes with rocket monsters and their destruction effects. And the ritual spell called Heavy Trigger is searchable by Dual Wheel Dragon, which is also a monster from Burst of Destiny. So this is something I felt was interesting, you know, out of the honorable mentions for the set. Now, the last, the fifth thing I wanted to mention is the two archetypes, which I'm very hyped up about. Most of the player base probably is, and it's Flunderies and Sword Souls. Now, Flunderies is just an archetype with such an interesting mechanic. They just normal summon a bunch of times, and it kind of reminds me of Prank Kids because you play on your opponent's turn, but you just decide which boss monster you want to utilize. So they have a monster which negates, the attack position special summoned monsters effect on the opponent's field, or you can Book of Moon all of the special summoned monsters on the opponent's field, or you can go, for example, into Rise of the Mega Monarch, and also it's got a one card combo. So this is for the Flunderies. I feel like it's very, it's got a lot of potential and I cannot wait to try it when the cards actually come. Now the other archetype is Sword Soul. It's a synchro summoning based strategy and what they do is the effect monsters summon tuner tokens and then you're locked into only being able to synchro summon while the tokens are on the field. So you can make different synchro monsters such as Adam Incipator, Reason, Dragite. You can also make um, Crimson Blader, Ruddy Rose Dragon, whatever you please essentially. The deck is going to obviously get even more explored as it drops but they also have in archetype boss monsters. And what they do is, for cause, they gotta banish a um, Sword Soul card or a YRM monster. And for example, they one of them negates a monster's effect. And when the trap cards, the archetype trap cards, are banished, they also produce tokens. So it's just token spam. And also, uh, a trap card is sort of like Salaman Great Rage, where it pops two cards on the opponent's field, but you also gotta pop one on your field. Now the monster also dropping in Burst of Destiny that boosts the archetype is Ecclesia the Virtuous in, in white. Now she's a light spell caster level 4, 1500, 1500 and she says If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon her once per turn this way and you can only use each of the following effects once per turn. During the main phase quick effect, you can tribute this card, special summon one Sword Soul monster or one Fallen of Albas from your hand or deck. During the end phase, if a fusion monster is sent to your grave this turn, you can add this card from your grave to your hand. So she's just support for the archetype. I mean, she she's an Ecclesia, which is interesting for the Dogmatica lore. Uh, but like she, people compare her to Lone Fire Blossom because it's a similar effect, but she's a quick effect. So effectively, she just summons up something that you might need in the Sword Soul archetype, but also she dodges Valor and Imperm while doing that. All right, so that was it for the cards and the archetypes that stood out to me the most. Now, please let me know if there's anything that you're maybe looking forward to, if I have missed anything, and also what you thought of the video overall. And also, don't forget to sub and like and ring the bell so you're notified the next time I upload a video. Peace.